Look, good morning. Uh, Shane Crawford is my name, and I really am very pleased to be here this morning. I'm the Managing Director of a Dick Collection practice based in Auckland called Specialist Collections and Consultants Limited. We've been operating since 2007. A uh, little bit about myself before we get into our Dick Collection activity this morning is uh, I'm a qualified legal executive. Unfortunately, I was naughty and I didn't finish off my law degree. <laughs> However, I am uh, planning on uh, continuing with uh, adult education. I've been collecting money since the age of 17. And I said a little bit earlier, we have a lot of experience in commercial debt, uh, maritime debt, uh, uh, marine cargo debt and transportation debt, uh, finance debt, insurance debt, and of course a lot lately concerning uh, construction debt. So. We're going to start this morning, and I am going to say, just give you a few things before we get into what debt collection is. But one of the most important business decisions that you will make will be choosing the right debt collection partner. And I use the word partner, not an agency, not a company. It's a partner. Because you're entrusting your money, your life, your commitment to your business and your staff, and you're entrusting your overdue money to a collection agency, you should be a partner. So the right debt collection partner does not have to be doing business in your area, a recognisable brand, the largest debt collection agency, hi, good, good morning, uh, the most expensive debt collection agency, or conversely, the cheapest debt collection agency, and one who constantly markets and advertise. And I say this because you want a debt collection agency who is going to add value to your business and one who understands your business. That's the nature of your business, the size of your business, the types of clients that you do business with, the difficulties that you have operating your business. And I think that's crucial because you need to have a, an ongoing relationship, an intimate relationship, if I can use that word professionally, because to do a good job for you, a debt collection agency understands your burdens and what you're going through and to understand you so they can effectively recover your money. And your needs running a successful business and the goals that you have for the future of your business. What should you look for before choosing a debt collection partner? And I think this is quite crucial too. And it is, I will just make a side comment here, and it is quite interesting um, with the comments that I've picked up just of late. People remarkably say to me, who do you send around? Do you know of anyone that's big, bad and ugly that you can send around to go and collect my debt? And unfortunately, not unfortunately, unfortunately for them, uh, we don't engage in that type of behaviour. And I'm going to tell you why a little bit later on. But when you're choosing your debt collection partner, and this is most important, find out if the debt collection agency or practice or your partner has actually experienced collecting your type of debt. You don't want to appoint someone, one of the larger companies for example, or any company, um, and you find that uh, a month later your debt is still sitting on the bottom of the pile because no one, it hasn't been supervised and no one is really sure how to approach it and how to go about it. Remember, it's your money and you want it back. I have said here, is the debt collection agency a member of the NZCIFE or the New Zealand Credit and Finance Institute? That's a professional organisation, offers uh, ongoing education to credit managers and debt collectors, so people are therefore upskilling and they, have, they learn knowledge that they can pass on to you, apply to your debt and to recover your money. Has debt collection agency received airtime on a consumer rights program such as Fair Go? And I think that's important because there are bullies. There are, unfortunately, I will clarify this and say generally, the debt collection agency is run by professional, qualified, experienced and good people. But unfortunately, with debt collection, there is a human element. And sometimes individuals get it wrong. But then there are times where the same individuals get it wrong far too many times. And you don't want them on programs like that because that's, if it came out that you appointed a debt collection agency that appeared on Fair Go, it could affect your brand, your public image, 
and more importantly, these types of things also go on social media today, Facebook or whatever it is, so you don't, you don't want that. What is the amount that the debt collection commission is that the debt collection agency will charge? And I think this is important, and this is where choosing the right partner is going to be helpful because most collection agencies, as a rule of thumb, will charge 20% plus GST. Depending on the dollar value of the debt, it may be lowered to somewhere possibly between 12.5 to 15% given the dollar value. But I think if the debt collection agency understands your business, how much money is owing to you, or the, or the, or the dollar value of the debt that, that the debt collection agency has been entrusted to collect for you, you should be able to negotiate with the agency and perhaps come up with a collection commission that is beneficial to both of you. That's important. Does a debt collection agency charge administration fees and late payment fees to its clients? I can assure you now, Specialist Collections and Consultants Limited does not charge any hidden costs. We don't believe so. We are in business to recover your money. We only get paid and survive and grow our business on our effectiveness, and that is recovering your money. And I think there are agencies out there that charge six monthly or annually administration fees, monthly fees, whatever it is. Remember, it's good getting your money back on one hand, but what comes in is always outgoings, and you don't want your money to, that has been collected to be diluted by hidden incidental costs that you're getting charged maybe six months or, or a year later. Be upfront with them, saying, if you, are, you want my business, I'm not gonna, you're not gonna charge me any monthly fees. We don't, put, uh, we don't charge fees for our clients. We deposit their money into their banking account at any given time when they want it. Usually, we settle out with our clients every 15 days. That's twice a month. But however, if the client wants their money earlier, they ask for it, they get it. Remember, it's your money. How long do you have to wait to receive your money? And this is most important, and I just touched on that. We, we, we settle out 15 to 30, you know, every 15 days. But you should be saying to a debt collection agency, if it's a large sum of money, or any money, but large sums of money, as soon as it's clear in your account, I want it immediately, and there should be no reasons why you don't get your money. Or if a debt collection agency or practice partner said to you, well, listen, we, are, we run our settlement statements, and we pay out our clients on the 15th or the 20th of every month, and you've got to wait to then, but they've had your money on the fourth day of the month, hypothetically, and you've got to wait to the 20th of the month, I'm saying no. That's my money, it's cleared, you've collected, I want it and I want it now, please. Be strong, ask them for it. Another thing that's interesting and where a lot of clients uh, do get uh, stuck here is they will give instructions to a debt collection practice, nothing happens, or they are generally dissatisfied with the result. So they say, I'm going to cancel my instructions with you and I'm going to go to another debt collection agency. Fees. In the mail, within a month, you'll get a bill for a cancellation fee, saying it could be on cases 10% of the value of the debt, the debt value that was lodged, or maybe 5%, but there may be a cancellation fee for withdrawing your instructions. It's quite interesting because you're withdrawing your instructions because you're dissatisfied with a service. Uh, which brings into, its, uh, into the equation a whole new dynamic around um, you know, a dispute and whether they should be doing that. But debt collection agencies, a lot of them do charge cancellation fees. Be aware of that when you're uh, appointing a debt collection agency. Be sure to say, if I'm dissatisfied with your service or I choose to withdraw my debt from your company, I am not going to be paying any cancellation fees. Uh, Reports are important, I think, you know, moving forward. You know, you want to be kept in the loop and informed. Uh, it's no use a debt collection agency collecting your debts and been all warm and fuzzy and saying thank you for your business. Two months or three months has gone by and you haven't had a check, you haven't had an email, you haven't had a phone call to advise you of the progress <coughs> of what is happening again with your money. You should be receiving regular updates from your debt collection partner. It's about respect. So I think we need to get into and look at really what is debt collection and what type of debt should you be referring on to a debt collection partner, a debt collection agency. 
Firstly, it's important to know the type of debt that should be referred to a collection agency. The debt preferably must be undisputed, meaning the goods and services have been supplied, there's been no dispute raised or communicated to you, and the debt amount is outstanding. The, owing, the, the amount owing must be clearly ascertained, meaning you are, the invoice is precise. You're, the cost of your goods and your service is accurate, it's, it's precise, and there can't be any dispute about what you're charging. The debt must be owing now, meaning you can't claim for something that you may be doing or may be charging in the future. So the goods and services must have been performed under your terms of trade, under your contract with your client, and the debt is owing now. So the goods, and, uh, goods have been supplied and the service performed, and the debt is legally enforceable. So it can be, it's not a social arrangement. Sometimes, you know, you want mothers come to us and say, I lent my son some money, um, but now can you make an example of him, please, and, you know, sue him for my $1,000 because he hasn't made an effort to pay me back. <laughs> that is, in effect, in a social arrangement, really, between mother and son, and you could argue it's not technically legally enforceable. So it must be legally enforceable. So here, in summary, you will use a debt collection agency once you have supplied goods or a service. The amount owing is certain, I put in brackets quantified. The amount owing is overdue now, and the debt is undisputed. A debt collector works for you, your partner, and obtains payment of the amount owing to you in the following ways. By making a formal demand for payment, That's fine. Works for you, making a formal demand to your debtor for payment of the amount owing in full by a stipulated date. By communicating the legal consequences of refusing or failing to pay the amount owing. If the total debt owing cannot be paid in full and immediately, and that's crucial because a good debt collection partner will not just take someone's word for it. They should be asking for your debtor to prove in the best way that they can that they cannot pay your debt immediately in full now or within a relatively quick period of time. You should be saying to them the total debt payment pay the debt collector's professional duty is to negotiate a repayment arrangement that has the debt paid in the shortest time frame possible because the debt collection partner must be focused on returning your money to you quickly. You don't want uh, debt collection agencies to, in a four or six months' time, saying, I've actually finally made a phone call to that person, and they did promise to pay me, and it was about a month ago, and sorry, we haven't followed it up, and we haven't got any further down the track. So <coughs> you want to be careful there. A good debt collection partner will remain in constant contact with your debtor whilst the debt is being repaid. And a good debt collection partner will do this. When a, when a repayment arrangement is implemented, they will say this arrangement is only valid for 30 days. Notwithstanding, at the end of 30 days, whether we renegotiate the same amount of repayments as the previous month, that's fine. But the repayment arrangement will be reviewed and renegotiated after 30 days and we'll either try and get more money coming in uh, for the following month on that arrangement, or if it does stay the same, that's fine. But every month you'll review the arrangement. So that has the, uh, the exercise or achieves a goal of not having someone paying you $10 per week for three years. You know, that's bad collections, and that should, a no debt collection agency should ever put you into that situation whereby you're receiving small amounts of money for an indefinite period of time and they are not trying to recover more money as quickly as possible. If the debtor cannot be contacted by phone, email, text message and through social media, the debt collector must visit the debtor's address and speak to the debtor personally about repaying the debt. Now, this is interesting because service takes cost. Here, you could, when you're appointing a debt collection agency, you can negotiate these things, but be clear what their fees are up front and what it's going to cost you for them to perform a service for you. I can assure you now that Specialist Collections and Consultants Limited offer two complementary 
debtor visits to a debtor's address to try and attempt to resolve the matter. That's our business decision. Other agencies may not be able to afford to offer such complementary activity. But you don't want to have to continually be charged fees for, every, for the fact that you want your money back. Okay, you want to recover as much of your money back as quickly as possible and full as possible or as large part of it as possible and again not have your the money recovered then diluted by incidental fees so when you sort of net the account you know really that you weren't uh, you didn't really get a great result after all That's fine. a good debt collector will follow your instructions and respect your business. Sometimes a client does want to maintain an ongoing business relationship and a debt collector and a good one and an experienced debt collector will be able to adapt to the set of circumstances that you want. So initially you might say this client is a new client or it's a long established client. They are causing some problems. We need a firm approach and a firm voice on the phone perhaps. Um, but just temper that with the fact that we would like to do business with this company again. So the client is saying, we want your money, and can you be firm and fair, but at the same time protect our relationship and our public image with the view that we want to do business with this company again. Conversely, other clients simply want their money returned. The relationship may have deteriorated so much that they say, I don't care whether we receive business from this client again, Please just get my money. A good debt collector will tell you where you're going wrong. And this is quite crucial because it needs to be um, really, really honest. One thing that we do, and I can understand why most people in the debt collection agency uh, industry do, but one thing I say respectfully that clients do is they hold on to debts too long. I have, uh, I tell everyone, the longer that a debt is owing, the longer and the harder it will be to collect. Clients will hold on to debt because they don't have terms of trade. They, uh, if they don't have terms to trade, they don't want to lose too much of their money by paying debt collection fees, or, and rightly so, and respectfully, they feel that they have the skills and the ability to recover the money themselves. But I will say, as a general rule, given circumstances, don't hold on to your debts too long. Because it is your money, and remember, the longer that the debt has been owing, the longer it may take to be repaid, and the longer it will take to be resolved. Okay. Sufficient information is crucial. A good debt collector can only be successful if they know how to contact the debtor. Where do they live? What is the email address? The landline telephone number, the mobile telephone numbers, Facebook um, avenues. Because the debt collector's job is to get in front of your debtor almost immediately after been appointed to discuss the debt that is owing and ask for payment. If you provide incorrect details, incorrect phone numbers, or you just say, um, I haven't spoken to this client for about six months, they used to live somewhere in Napier, um, and we get this information and the email's not working or email's bounced back, the mobile phone number's been disconnected, um, the landline's disconnected and they've moved from their address, it does make it harder for us and therefore what does it do? It slows down the collection process. So there is a responsibility on you as a client to make sure that you, are, that you do know where your clients are and how, and how they can be contacted at any time because it makes it easier for us, it returns your money to you a lot sooner. Terms of trade, which we will be discussing later on this afternoon, but, if you, but that's crucial. Credit limits. If you are extending credit to your customers, they may be too high. We might investigate uh, a company and find out that you're, you're extended a credit limit, which often is used too, by the way, up until that limit, for a business that really uh, may not be able to pay you, or there are real risk factors that the credit limit that you have allowed and has been utilised may not be paid for you, may, may not be paid back to you. So I would suggest work on the basis of 
proof, like any good relationship, any friendship, you know, we earn the right in life. And to a large extent with your clients, they too have to earn the right with you initially, unless you've checked them out very thoroughly and, you're commi and you arrive at a commercial decision that says after all my checks and balances I am prepared to allow this much credit limit. But if you can't obtain that information, or you can't do, if you like, your own due diligence on this client, make sure that you're not, for the sake of buying business, you're not affording a credit limit that may get you into trouble in the future. Okay. They'll also tell you if you need to take legal action and the reasons why. But up above that, this is very good, and one thing that I'm very big on and that we do see all the time is the risk assessment concerns such as poor morals and perhaps the morale shown by your debtor and a lack of personal responsibility. And that can be generalised through commercial debt, consumer debt. Commercial debt through uh, one man or woman director shareholders or husband and wife shareholders and directors or an individual in the case of a consumer debt. It's about personal integrity, personal accountability. And if we see that there's no regard for the law, there's no regard for you because they'll say, yes, I know I owe the debt, but I don't care. I'll, I'll get around to paying it when I feel like it or after I've had my trip to the UK and I come back and I find a job. I said, how are you going to the UK, are you? But you haven't got a job. You know, all these excuses, that goes into your risk factors because, again, if we go back a step, if you want to do business or have an ongoing relationship with a client, but they're telling us all these sorts of things that are really against your, maybe perhaps your company values and more importantly, against fairness, then we were going to let you know. And so maybe you should be looking at whether you really want to do business with this client because these are the things that we're, we're getting back while we're trying to do our job to recover your money for you. Credit inquiries. I think, speak a million words. A lot of businesses don't use them. I almost would entreat you, I'll use the word entreat you, that when you are opening new credit accounts or doing business for the first time with people for a small fee, and specialist collections and consultants that does provide a credit reporting service and a very cheap one, is to get a credit report. Because what you see in front of you when someone comes in to open a credit account may not be exactly the same behind the scenes. You'll see a list of payment defaults, how many times someone's been to a debt collection agency, whether they have had a legal action taken against them and enforced by the courts, the, t the amount of credit applications they've made for one reason or another, and the, and the dollar value of the loans that they're trying to make. And that credit debt report, when analysed, is going to give you some specific information to say, this is high risk. It's going to give you a risk identification about whether you should be doing business with this individual, or conversely, if you do business with this individual, but you're going to lower your credit limit and then they have to earn the right with you. Give clear instructions of actually what you want. I think the debt collector, a good one and an experienced one, will adjust their style. It's, uh, we do it to a lot of younger people today, younger people who are focused on communicate by social media. It's very rare that there's a certain <coughs> age demographic, it's hard to reach by the, on the telephone. And we uh, sometimes, uh, our collection techniques is by SMS, message, Facebook, and other things. And people, we've lost, and I say lost, I, I do believe so, that there's a certain period now where people won't want to come and sit to you, look at you, and put their hand up and go, I've made a mistake, or I'm in trouble. This is my set of facts and my search situation. I do owe the debt, I acknowledge that. Please help me sort this out. Unfortunately, we don't, it's not, life isn't that easy anymore, unfortunately. But they do that in their own way through social media and, and text messaging or whatever it is. You need to ad ad adopt your approach because society has changed and that there was a time where certain careers had authority or people would respect their elders, they would respect the situation or they would know that they were wrong and they would come to you and try and resolve it. What I suggest you do is there's some notepads out on the reception uh, with our email address on them. If you have any questions, please email me. I'd be delighted to hear from you. 
uh, and, we can, and we'll, I'll come back to you within 24 hours. Um, and if you want a copy of the PowerPoint slide, because there are some issues around credit management as we go through here as well, um, I can actually email the, the, the presentation to you. And I'm sorry, I think I didn't get through it all. It, it, was, uh, it was a bit too, too long, but I do apologise to you for that. But um, credit management, very briefly, is similar but different to debt collection. Credit management is about, as I said earlier, about maintaining your clients and uh, trying to um, reduce the risks and the burdens by getting as much money in as quickly as possible um, and, and at the same time um, uh, maintaining that business relationship. But look, if you have any questions, please, I don't think I'm talking about terms of trade until around 12.30 this afternoon. Please come and talk to me. Oh, actually, I'm happy to take your, your, your names and your email addresses now, and I will make sure I email you a copy of the, the PowerPoint presentation for you if you need any further information. So thank you.